Indeed, he knows better than I, does he not? And if, if I'm, I'm sorry, children, but I, I just want to thank you for, on the spur of the moment for Daddy and, and coming on up and blessing the people. How's everyone? Are you glad to be in the house today? Are you glad that we made it through another week? And it, our life is not promised, but God in his faithfulness has brought us here today. And so I still want to pray for the Lewis family uh, who was eulogized on Monday. And we're still praying for them. But God is faithful even still. And we still have to give him praise, amen, for what he's done and continuing to do in our life. Uh, we're going to read a scripture this morning. I hope you brought your Bible, and if you don't have your Bible, you can, if you have your smartphone or your tablet or whatever that you have, and we're going to read Isaiah chapter 65. If you could turn to Isaiah chapter 65 and verse 17. Isaiah chapter 65 and verse 17. Can I have a little bit more on my mic, please? Isaiah chapter 65 and verse 17. When you have that, just say amen. And the Bible reads as follows. For behold, I create new heavens and a new earth, and the former shall not be remembered nor come into mine. And verse 18, but be ye glad and rejoice forever in that which I create. For behold, I create Jerusalem, a rejoicing and her people a joy. And verse 19, and I will rejoice in Jerusalem and joy in my people and the voice of weeping shall be no more heard in her, nor the voice of crying. And verse number 20 says, there shall be no more thence an infant of days, nor an old man that hath not filled his days, for the child shall die in a hundred years old, but the sinner being in a hundred years old shall be accursed. And verse 21, and they shall build houses and inhabit them, and they shall plant vineyards and eat from them. And verse 22, they shall not build and another inhabit. They shall not plant and another eat. For as the days of a tree are, the days of my people and mine elect shall long enjoy the work of their hands. And verse number 23, they shall not labor in vain, nor bring forth for trouble, for they are the seed of the blessed of the Lord, and their offspring with them. And verse number 24, and it shall come to pass that before they call, I will answer. And while they are yet speaking, I will hear. And verse number 25, the wolf and the lamb, shall feed together, and the lion shall eat straw like the bullock, and the dust shall be the serpent's meat. They shall not hurt, nor destroy in all my holy mountain, saith the Lord. The title of my sermon is, It Won't Always Be Like This. It Won't Always Be Like This. Shall we pray? Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, it is your time. Lord, we thank you that you have seen fit to have this divine appointment with us today. And God, as I always ask, that you would hide me behind the cross. Let you be lifted up high. Let you increase while I decrease. And Lord, at the end of this thing, we can say that we have truly been in the presence of the Lord. And we thank you and praise you for you are too good. And we just want to praise your name today in the name of Jesus. Let everybody say amen and amen. 
We all watched in horror as the threats became reality as on February 24th and 22, Russia started to invade Ukraine. This war had actually begun in 2014, if you recall, little skirmishes here and there, but now the full invasion seemed to happen and all of the forces lined up and entered into Ukraine. The invasion cost Europe's fastest growing refugee crisis since World War II, with more than 7 million Ukrainians fleeing the country and a third of the population displaced. Subsequently, world leaders begin to scramble around uh, trying to figure out what to do with the problem. America not wanting to get into another war with another country that possesses, they possesses weapons of mass destruction and also including devastating nuclear capabilities. And the U.S. urged our allies to put some of the strictest sanctions in place that this modern world has ever seen. And because of the war, we started to feel its effects. Actually, the world started to feel its effects. As I looked up about this situation, there was a Wall Street Journal article, and they were responding to a question, why is gas prices so high, and why is the economy having such issues, and why is there things happening worldwide, the Russian-Ukrainian war has caused an almost instantaneous global supply shock. Russia is one of the biggest oil producers in the world. And removing once the war intensified, traders and shippers shun Russia's oil and goods, removing much of it from the daily global supply. And here on the home front, and worldwide, we start to feel its effects. And some economists here in America say that by July 4th, we could see gas prices reaching to almost 10 or $10 a gallon. And I recently joked on Facebook, I, you know, when you can watch YouTube and learn anything. How many of you know that? Everybody watch YouTube? If something's broke, you go to YouTube and fix it, right? You can watch it and learn anything. I said, well, I'm going to start my own oil refinery business. And I'm going to sit up back in my backyard and start digging for my own oil, right? Because of this issue and the gas price is killing. Anybody ride a bike today to, to church? Any, or a donkey, perhaps, right? You all know that you've been thinking about it. What are we going to do with these prices? But even in Walmart, and, that, and Walmart is the cheapest we have, right? Walmart is the cheapest that we have, and people are going in and coming out with five things in their hand, costing them over $100 or more. President Joe Biden said the world would experience food shortages as a result of the Russia invasion of Ukraine, and Ukraine and Russia are both major producers of wheat. In particular, in Kyiv, the government has already warned that the country's planting and harvest have been severely disrupted by this war. And recently I was listening to NPR, and because of the war's effects, uh, now in the continent of Africa, the effects are starting to affect them as far as food shortages. The recent article on the Global Health says that more than 23 million people are experiencing extreme hunger in Ethiopia, Somalia, and Kenya. According to a new report by Oxfam and Save the Children, that's up from almost for over 10 million last year. And the region's worst drought, 40 years, is being exacerbated by conflict and the pandemic. And the war in Ukraine has sent food prices soaring to record levels. Farmers in Africa are unable to get the fertilizers that they used to get shipped to them because trade has stopped to grow with the demand that keeps growing for their fruits and vegetables. 
And when I hear all of this, I hear the words of the Bible. And Jesus saying in Matthew 25 that you would hear wars and you would hear rumors of wars. And when Timothy responded and said, saying in the last days of earth history, perilous times would come. And wouldn't you agree that we are in some perilous times? And the Bible keeps echoing in the mind. The Bible student keeps going to the word of God and prophecy or telling of the future keeps coming to the Bible student's mind as the Bible things are happening just as the Bible said that they would. And we live in a terrible time when you could be going shopping and end up dead in the case of an 18-year-old who assassinated uh, black people just merely shopping, researching out where they would be, researching the demographic and saying this is where the greatest population of African Americans are, and he sculpted it out, visited, wrote this manifesto, indoctrination upon his brain, and comes and acts out and assassinates men and women as they went about their normal day. We live in a society where you can drop off your children and you can drop them off at school and you expect to go and pick them up and expect to hug them and expect to take them home and you get a call, there's some tragedy that has taken place. And in fact, for many, you would never see your children again. And so humans are, the Bible keeps ringing that men's hearts would fail them for fear. And humans looking to other humans, pleading with politicians to change laws so that yours and my children aren't next. But the politicians seemed unable to act and things that nobody seems to be able to rescue, especially children. But I remember as a child, I used to struggle with the fact that why God would create us, and my son comes to me now, and he asked this question, and he asked it all the time. In fact, he asked it this morning. He was like, why in the world would God create us if he knew something like this would happen? As my son starts to live, he starts to see how the world really is. And he actually sees playing with other children in the neighborhood who may be mean or, or disrespectful or things towards him. And he starts to see that this world is not what he thought it was and that it is an ugly place to be. And most children ask this questions, but guess what? Many adults wonder the same thing, that why would God do it? In fact, we, if you're honest with yourself, a lot of us start looking around, especially when our situations are not going the way that we want them to, and start looking for someone to blame. Who is responsible for this? And if we be honest, sometimes we start looking up and we start to feel that what's going on is God allowing and why is he allowing these things to happen to us? And our suspicion starts to grow and is God loving as he says he is? I remember a young lady saying to me recently, I can never believe in a God who can let little children die or get cancer and suffer. Another friend just recently saying, I stopped believing in God who took my mother away from me when I was a young child, just when I needed her the most, and now she is gone. And some are looking at God, angry at him, blaming Jesus for the trouble that surrounds us. And I simply said to them, you just don't know him. If you understood that Jesus saved you even before he created you. Before he knelt in the dust, he had already made plans to lay in a tomb. Before he hung a star in our galaxy, he had already made plans to hang on a cross. Are you understanding what I'm saying this morning? What kind of God 
would, would make rain, and rain is described in the Bible as blessings. What kind of God would allow rain when the Bible says rain fall on the just and the unjust? This, first, this verse is found in Matthew chapter 5, verse 45. It simply blows away this idea or misconceptions about God that he bestows blessings just upon his saints, but withholds them from those who are not joined to him in this kingdom. In other words, if you don't believe in him, and you don't want him, and you reject him, and you persecute him, you choose the world, and that's all that you want, God will still bless you. What kind of God is that when you say that I don't want you, this is what I want, and he said, I will give it to you, but I will bless you anyway. That is why it could never be his fault, the mess that we're in. He's too loving, and we'll see that in a minute. If you search the scriptures, there is nowhere that we are praised. Can I get an amen on that? You can search all around the world. You will never see humanity praised for their goodness. But how many of you know that he is good? How many you know that he is kind? He is loving. It has never been about us. Have you ever been to the book of Psalms? Have anybody been to the book of Psalms and labored in that chapter? Right? Psalms is, is funny to me in ways because there's a whole lot of sorry and please don't when you read that chapter, when you read the book of Psalms. Am I right? There's a whole lot of, Lord, you could have dealt me with me this way, but merciful are your ways. Thank you, Jesus, right? And we labor in Psalms. And I, I know if you turn to Psalms 116 quickly, this is uh, the, the, the Psalm 116 is one of my favorite chapters. And, and you know, when we're discussing our praise and adoration to the God who only deserves it, uh, Psalms 116 says, I love the Lord because he hath heard my voice and my supplications. And I looked up that word supplications. What does that mean? And that word means earnest or humbly, right? And verse 2, because he hath inclined his ear unto me. Therefore, I will call upon him as long as I live. The sorrows of death have compassed me, and the pains of hell gat hold upon me. That word gat cracked me up. I'm like, what in the world does that gat mean? And this is the, the, the King James Version. Some of those words will trip you up. But gat means it has a serious hold upon you. And I found trouble and sorrow. Then I called upon the name of the Lord. Oh, Lord, I beseech thee. And I'm like, what word does that mean? And that word means beg. And so now we're begging now. Now we're more desperate as he calls out to God. Deliver my soul. Gracious is the Lord and righteous. Yea, God is merciful. How many times are we hearing that merciful show up? Right? The Lord preserves the simple. I was brought low, and he helped me. Return unto thy rest, O my soul, for the Lord hath dealt bountifully with me. For thou hast delivered my soul from death, mine eyes from tears, and my feet from failing. There's a whole lot of praise going on in Psalms. And I looked at Psalms one, uh, chapter 117. That's one of the shortest books in the Bible, and it has only two verses in that book. And verse 1 says, Oh, praise the Lord, all you nations. Praise him, all ye people, for his merciful kindness. There it is again. Towards us, and the truth of the Lord endureth forever. Praise ye the Lord. Psalms 118. It's some of the highlights I love. Psalms is amazing. If you, if you have a chance, go and read Psalms. Go through it verse by verse. But Psalms, some of the highlights of uh, Psalms 118, it says, Some may be in a small place mentally or physically this afternoon. And this verse says, I called upon the Lord in distress. Do you see the theme? There's a lot of sorrow going on. There's a lot of trouble happening. There's a lot of things that is, this person is desperate, right? Have you been there before? Oh, don't let me be up here by myself claiming his goodness. Have you been there before? When, when, when your bills are short, 
or sicknesses racks your body and you don't know which way this thing is going to go. I know I've been there. And the Bible says, this person is in distress. And the Lord answered me and set me in a large place. You know, that answer, how many of you know that a lot of times when you call your phone, or the, the phone or you call someone, it goes unanswered. I don't know how many times I call my house, right? I call my wife and my oldest daughter, and they don't answer the phone. And I want, I, it, to me, something is, I'm desperate. I need you to answer the phone. And they don't answer, right? And, and, and sometimes they are busy or, or, or sometimes they're doing things or they didn't hear it, right? But how many times have we been in distress, feeling low and anxious, feeling desperate? And if you call on the name of Jesus, there's no busy signal. Can I get an amen today? When you call on him, there's no busy signal. You don't need Wi-Fi to connect to him, right? You don't have to Google and try to find out how to connect to him. The Bible says, if you just call his name, he will answer. There's a lot of uncertainty all around us, but one thing is for sure, that God says, if you just say my name, I'm going to be there and answer you. It's mighty quiet in here. I'm, I'm going to have to say amen all by myself. The problem we have today in church, right? We want to run after these politicians to solve our problems and humanity. I will say it again and again. I will trust in the one who is altogether lovely, altogether wonderful to me. There's not a lot of things that are wonderful in this world right now. But I believe that Jesus is wonderful. And I will put my trust in him. And I will put my confidence in the Lord, not man. 118 verse 8 says, I will put my trust in the Lord than to put confidence of man. Right? Verse 9 says, it's better to put your trust in the Lord than put confidences in princes. In other words, presidents, governors, and everybody else, you might trust, but I ain't trusting none of them. But I'm going to trust in the one that my hope and faith will be constantly in the Lord. I don't know about you, but I want to abide in the love of God who promises that his mercy endures forever. How many of you know that forever means exactly that? That it doesn't go away. Our money might go away. Thank you for that. That's right. Our money may go away, right? And, and, and things may disappear out of our life. Friends may desert us. But the Bible says that the mercy of our creator will last forever. Nothing lasts on this planet, right? You got my, I got this favorite, favorite jacket I wear, this, this one. I wear it all the time, and it fits me just right, you know? My arms are all loose, right? And the other day, I found a hole. I said, Lord, have mercy. It, it's not over already, is it, right? I love that thing, right? And so, so now, it just, you know, when it's cool, it just, you know, I can, it's a perfect temperature in this jacket. I loved it. And the zipper is all messing up. I said, well, and that nothing lasts forever in this planet. But I'm so glad that there is someone out there and his name is Jesus Christ, that looks beyond my faults and sees every single one of my needs. Sin was never supposed to be our experience. I'll say that again. Sin was never supposed to enter into our experience. And our parents failed the test. But we can have victory in the life through the power of the Holy Spirit. God already had said that I'm going to, listen, when I tell my son, I said, I said, did, did you and your mother know that you would make mistakes? Did we know that? And we still wanted to meet you. We still wanted to be with you. We still wanted to love you. See, we don't understand the love of, listen, eternity will not be long enough to understand why he would do what he did. But even before creation, he said, I've already got a plan for them knuckleheads, right? I already got a plan for them that myself 
myself would be offered for you and I. I don't know about you, but that's who I want to be next to. The word of God says in 1 Corinthians 13 that, by the way, that the word of God says in 1 Corinthians chapter 13 that there hath no temptation taken you, but is such as common to man. And so nobody has a special problem attached to them. Nobody can say that I struggle with this one thing nobody else struggles with. The Bible says everything that happens to you and everything that I allow to happen to you, it comes, it's just your size, it fits you well, and when you accomplish and get the victory over that thing, your faith increases, right? Nobody forces us to do sin, right? Nobody forces us to watch the lions every week, right? I thought that'd get a little more chuckle than that, but that's all right. But we do it every week, don't we? Well, I do, but, but God is still faithful, amen? But the Bible says, that verse says, he will not suffer you to be tempted above what you're able. And so God shields whatever temptation is coming your way. And the only one that should be able to handle it is you. And God is saying, you can handle it. That's why you are dealing with it. But with the temptation, also make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. What kind of God is that? That he gives us little tests and things and nothing to overwhelm us, nothing to hurt us. But the Bible says he gives it to us so we can be overcomers through Christ Jesus our Lord. God is always trying to teach us to trust him. All sin is voluntary. I'll say that again, all sin is voluntary. But all choices, all of our choices can bring hardship and pain. Do you know the Bible says that every decision that we make has a weight of eternalness to it? That our decisions that we make every day has an eternal effect on what we choose to do. God will never take away the temptation. I'll say it again, God will never remove the temptation, but more we resist and ask God to help us through the temptation. This verse says he will not maybe, but he will provide a way to escape the trappings of a sinful life. God is a God of choice, right? God is a God of free will. God allows us if we murder, God allows us if we lie and steal to take place. Now that does not remove the consequence from us, but God is not forcing you to love him. My son asked me the other day, he said, why is it that God didn't just destroy the devil? And I told him, because if he did that, we, if you've heard this answer, if he did that, what would the angels do? They would serve him out of what? Out of fear. And they would not serve him out of love. God does not just want you to serve him because you could go to hell, but he wants you to serve him because you truly love him. See, as humans, we tend to do things to get things in return. Husbands, do we do that? I hope not. Do you do things for your wife just to get things in return? I don't do that. I don't know about you, but I don't do that. I do it out of the goodness of my heart all the time. Praise God. My wife will tell you that too. I didn't see any men laughing at that. But God is calling us to a relationship with him no matter what is going on around us, right? What is going on? I will praise you. This is what I want to be able to do. I want to be able to praise him no matter what's going on. If I have a million dollars in my pocket, right, which I don't, but if I did, in my pocket, or that when I pull out that pocket, lint flies out, I still want to be able to praise him. And I want to be able to choose to praise him even if I'm healthy or I'm sick. See, a lot of times it's easy to do it when things are going right. 
It's easy to be faithful and do those things when things are going right, when we're feeling good. But what happens when things happen to us personally? which are sickness or relationship issues. What do we do when problems arise, when we're low on money, low on food? Can we still praise our God? I want to be like that, but I need the Holy Spirit's help. Like the song says, this is my my story, this is my song. You know the song, praising my Savior all the day long. Sometimes you got to do that. The Bible says to pray without ceasing. Why? Because things happen all through the day. The devil never ceases to try to destroy you. I want to praise my Savior all the day long. Beloved, the word of God is our light in a dark world. It seems that we try everything a lot of times except Jesus. And I've been there, right? We will be all over Google searching for the meaning of life before we open these pages. People will always come up with expert opinions and we'll watch TV trying to find out what others think when the Bible is simply sitting there and being avoided. And we'll listen to others what their beliefs are on the subject, but what about what God says about the subject of life? I will always say, if your beliefs are not anchored in scripture, then I must question what you believe. I don't know about you, but when I go to my own thought press, my own thought process or my mind, and when I peek up around there, it's messed up up there. It's messed up, right? Have you ever actually sat down and and you're thinking and, and, and sometimes you're like, why did I even think that, right? There's something wrong with me, right? And certain things that we, if we think about, you're just like, my goodness, Lord. It's like, it's like the spirit has totally left, right? But that's all right. God is still faithful. But there has to be something that governs the human's minds and actions. There's got to be something true, and there has to be something real, and there has to be something without fail that truth, listen, truth matters. The Bible matters today. I can't trust the way I feel. And believe me, I've tried. And I failed every time. I cannot trust the way I feel, but, the, but, but I always say, when I try to interject myself, I say, help me, Holy Ghost. Jeremiah says this, that the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? And as we are on our road map to success, true success has always been in how creation seeks after Jesus Christ. I will say it again, that the person that will win in the end is the person who can be disciplined. The person that can ignore what's happening around them and still choose to get up and pray, still choose to open the pages, still put away their Facebook time and their Instagram time and whatever they're involving in their life and open these pages. Success, eternity rides on it. Jesus never stops seeking after us. But what are we going to do to get to him? Do we realize that Jesus left all of heaven where he was adored, where all of heaven worshipped him with adoration and praise? But he left that to get to you and I. And honestly, he sacrificed all. And when you look at it, what exactly have we sacrificed for him? What exactly have we given up for him? What exactly have we done for him lately? God left everything. God feels pain. Do you know that he feels pain? Do you know that he feels hurt? Do you know that he cries over some of the decisions that we make? What have we sacrificed really for our creator? I found this beautiful quote. Listen to the pen of inspiration. I'm almost done. 
But listen to the pen of inspiration, what she says. Beautiful. She says, Jesus deals with us as individuals. His heart is large enough. His love is great enough. His knowledge is comprehensive enough for the personal touch with each one. He knows me by name. Just as he calls all the infinite number of stars by their names, he knows my experiences. How many of you know that God knows who you are intimately and he cares about us? He sympathizes with me in my trials and in my temptation. He loves me as if, we, if I were the only object of his love. He cares for me as if he had no other care for. I can tell him of my troubles, and he listens as if I were the only one who came to him for help. He meets my every need as if I were the only one who felt any need. He is mine as if I had exclusive rights to him. Do you see what's happening here? God has always loved us. What is happening around the world and what's happening with human beings was never his fault. God has always wanted us. But the question is, do we want him? God has always called after us. God has been calling you, and every human on planet Earth has heard that call. But do we answer him? A popular news anchor said this of God. I don't believe in a God. I believe you're born, you live, and you die. And that's it. Well, I'm here to tell all of you. I hope that he got right with God before he passed away. But I'm here to tell you this morning, don't believe the lie that it will not always be like this. Don't believe the lie that the devil is showing just because we see violence happening all over our land. Just know one thing, that it, it will not always be like this. How do you know? John 14, 1 through 3 says, let not your heart be troubled. If you believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. And I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself that where I am, there you may be also. Don't believe the lie. It will not always be like this. I'm here to tell you this morning that in Acts 1 verse 10 through 11 says they were looking, the disciples after Jesus as he's being caught up into the heavens and they're looking at him as he disappears in the clouds. And as they're looking intently as he was going upwards when suddenly two men dressed in white, stood beside them and said to them, men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand there looking into the sky? This same Jesus who has been taken from you into heaven will come back the same way that you saw him go to heaven. I'm here to tell you this morning, it won't always be like this. Revelation 22, chapter 12, look, I am coming soon, and my reward is with me, and I will give to each person according to what they have done. And I'm here to say that it won't always be like this. Revelation chapter 21, verse 4, and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death neither sorrow, this is a promise I'm reading, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain for the former things. What we're seeing right now as the world is going crazy, the former things are passed away. 
and behold, all things become new. I'm here to tell you this morning, Oakwood, it won't always be like this. God is faithful to his children. All he has ever wanted was to be with you and I. And we can count it all joy that what God said in his word can complete what he said that he would do. I don't know about you this morning as I close. I don't know what your situation is personally. I don't know what you have been going through personally, but I know that every human on this planet, God is saying it's getting late in the hour. I need decisions from my people. I need them to know that I love them, but they have to make decisions. You know, I'm so passionate and I speak so because I want everyone to know him like I know him. I want everyone to experience his love, but the, the night is getting late. And the choices that we had before, we don't have time as we used to. In fact, Job says you live, trouble surrounds you, and then you die. God is calling each one of us to a deeper relationship with him. God is calling for each one to look at the words and the scriptures, gain strength from here, gain strength from here, gain strength from the words of prophecy, saying that he that shall come will come and will not tarry. Will you do that for me this morning? Will you make it a purposeful choice to seek after the creator? Will you do that this morning? Every head is bowed and every eye is closed. Lord, you see your people here this morning. I'm emotional when I talk about you. I'm emotional when I, when, when I think of you and what you did for me and all of us. I get emotional when I see that those are rejecting you. I get emotional when I see that those that you've given this message to are not living according to what you asked them to do. Lord, I see those right here, and the Spirit is telling me there are those here right now that are not living the way that you would like for them to live. I know I've been there, but God, you are so merciful, and you're so patient, and you're so kind that you just want us to make a decision and stay. Make a decision that, they, that, that I will never let go. There may be some rocky times. I may have some issues now and again. But one thing I need to hold on to, that your promises are sure. And that you said in your word will take place. Lord, help us to be ready when you come. Help us to put away all earthly things that are distracting us from a true relationship with you. Lord, there are decisions that must be made. There are decisions for you that some have still not made yet. And Lord, so I'm praying that although I've been in this church all my life, Lord, that you give me a revival in my spirit, that you will revive me and let me know that I shall tell everybody anywhere that I go that you have been good to me. And so be with Oakwood Seventh-day Adventist Church. Lord, we've had our issues and problems, the pandemic. Some have still not returned. But Lord, our church is still open and you're still allowing us to be here. And Lord, I pray for each member. And those who have not made that decision, I'll have to say, if there's anyone here, every head is bowed and every eye is closed, if there's anyone here that wants to accept Jesus for the first time, just raise your hand right where you are. If there's anyone that wants to accept Jesus right now, you've never accepted him before, but you want to accept him right now, just raise your hand. Just raise your hand right now. My second appeal, if there is someone here that says, I want to be baptized, I want to start a journey by having Bible study and being baptized, if you'll just raise your hand right where you are, 
Anybody that wants Bible study or baptism, just raise your hand right where you are. Third appeal. If anyone needs the Holy Spirit to come into their heart right now, and you need God to stay with you, and you want God to change your, who you are for the better, and if your situation is desperate, just raise your hand. God sees you. God bless you. God bless you. God sees you. He hears, and he understands, and he will answer you. Lord, as I close, your coming is very soon. We don't know from day to day what's going to happen. But Lord, I want to be faithful and I want all those here to be faithful. And so I ask that you will cover them in the precious name of Jesus. Let everybody say amen and amen. This now concludes our service and uh, we just hope that you have the remaining Sabbath, a good one. And even if someone did not respond, and if you want those things, Bible study, or just please approach one of the elders, and we'll make sure we help you along your journey. Uh, please stay safe this week, and may God truly bless you. Amen.